Tbilisi, Georgia. This is Burn for Georgian Crossroads. And today I thought what we would do was revisit street art in Tbilisi, except this time it's not really art, it's graffiti. And what's the difference? Well, we're going to discuss that. Um, I did do a unexpected Tbilisi uh, street art exploration earlier, and I'll probably do one again in the future. But when I made that video, a uh, local person said to me, yeah, but you're not saying graffiti is good. And I knew what they meant. And that is to say that there, there is a difference, and it's hard to define. Sometimes the very same people who are street artists are also graffiti artists. I look at graffiti as being something which defaces, whereas street art is something which enhances. If you have a blank industrial space, or if you get permission to put something on a wall, uh, a blank dead industrial space, or something like that, yeah, you can paint something and maybe add something to it. As you can see here in this underground passageway, uh, to the entrance of the Bharatashvili Bridge. A lot of interesting artwork in this area here. I'm pretty sure it was all done by official commission. Uh, it looks really well done. Occasionally you'll see someone having graffitied over a, a real work of art. I mean, I don't necessarily like all the art, but it certainly does make a statement and it's something I appreciate. And I think graffiti does something very different. Graffiti isn't something like this, which really adds to the meaning of a place. But rather, graffiti is something like this. There's a tag here. I won't even bother saying the name. Uh, it's just a guy defacing this building, the Academy of Sciences, also the Kino House the uh, cinema house along Rustavelli Avenue and we're going to go here a little further and and what I want to do is I want to show you what happens when graffiti just gets out of hand um, now this building as you can see is an old Stalinist gothic building in fact I'm going to pull up a photograph at a certain point and show you what the building looks like but people uh, sell things. Uh, sometimes these are for tourists, sometimes they're things that people need. Uh, for instance, the people sell uh, painting supplies here. There's several painting supply stores in the area because the Academy of the Arts is nearby. when I first came here and I went in to see uh, the building we're about to go look at and it had one or two pieces of graffiti and a year and a half ago it was like that and my friend June said he'd come there two years earlier and there was none of them so we're coming up to this building now you can see the uh, bits of graffiti. I mean, look at these beautiful columns. I like this old Stalinist Gothic architecture. The Academy uh, officially starts in 1941. I don't know if the building was built then. Probably not, because that was the middle of the war. But it was probably built during Stalin's era. And then you come to this building. Now, what is this building? This is, this is what it looked like before being defaced. And it was an aerial tramway uh, entrance, uh, what the Georgians often call a ropeway. And it, as you can see, it's got this ornate grill work on it. If you went inside, unfortunately, I couldn't find a really good photo. But this gives you an idea of what it was like during the late Soviet period. And look at the the curly cues and the grill work and the... the uh, the way the, the walkway just goes up and up and up. Now, there was a tragedy that occurred 
in the year 1990, starting with the... Uh, but look at this red line here shows the line that the tramway went all the way to the top of Matatsuminda Mountain. Uh, there is now there is also a funicular that goes up there. But there was a tragedy. And this tragedy was in 1990. The cable which brought the thing together, and uh, it was like a very very long cable, snapped, and the two cars that were on it at the same time fell apart, 20 people died, and 15 people were injured. This is one of the old towers, which is no longer there. Of uh, They're pulling it apart here. But uh, that's what this building was. It was the entrance to this uh, amazing tram line, which had this tragedy in 1990. Now, Georgia went into a period of complete uh, collapse, basically, in the 1990s. But this building looked like it did um, up until a couple of years back, about three or four years ago. It still had no markings on it. Maybe a couple on the outside, but nothing really. And then what happened was an entrance was found, and then graffiti artists decided this was their building. And this is where I draw the line. And there are, interestingly enough, some street art inside the building going all the way up that uh, round walkway going up. The whole thing is covered in street art, sometimes by this very artist that I like. I guess it was just too juicy a target to ignore. But there is a limit. And the part of the limit is that underground passageway I showed you before had nothing on it. It was a dead industrial type of space. Perfect place for street art. This, why would you deface this? I mean, Stalinist Gothic is not the greatest style in the world, but this totally matches the mood of Tbilisi. It could have been a building used for something really amazing, but instead, well, it has the worst kind of graffiti here, just the, the you know, someone just writing whatever on it. Um, it's also got tags on it, uh, larger tags inside. And to clean this up it would cost... In American money, it would cost millions of dollars. Had they not done this, they would have saved millions of dollars. So the people who do this, to me it shows, it shows a disrespect for everything. It shows a disrespect for life. Because if you can't see this is a beautiful building, you can't see. I mean, that, it's a, it's, it's a very interesting looking building. So I went over there uh, during the uh, middle of the winter before the, uh, restrictions came on for the pandemic and I took these shots not that I couldn't have done that during the pandemic and I certainly could but it was worse than it was last time now this is me peeking inside through one of the holes and you can see I mean, there's a lot of tags um, I mean, that's not bad art, but then again, it's, who cares? It's, it's defacing, it's just ruining the structure, making it so that it, it becomes an eyesore, it becomes just something, it goes from being something that brings beauty and life to the city, to being something that takes it away. Now, there's a couple of people, a couple of young girls were walking up there, that's the hole by which they get in. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got to be pretty small, high school student or university student. Now, this is what happens when the world is taken over by graffiti artists. This is actually really new. This is in the, after the George Floyd protests in Seattle, in the place that was originally called the Chaz, now called the Chop. And uh, this is this shows you it's a bit on the obscene side, but this is what happens when you just say, "Yeah, take over every square space. You can do whatever you want. You destroy the meaning. Not that these are beautiful buildings, by any means, but the point is, everything here just screams hatred. 
So I hope it's clear. I am not against street art. Good street art. But when you have random graffiti, I find tags at this point to be hopelessly outdated and uh, basically a sign of bragging. Uh, it's, it, and it doesn't mean anything anymore. That I think what happens is that you have the breakdown of civil institutions uh, in those areas. They don't add to the life of a city or the, or the beauty of a place. They distract, they detract from it, they destroy it. And so I want to encourage the beauty of a city, the beauty of, of art, but I do not want to encourage the ugliness that often goes along with so much graffiti, the tearing down something that is beautiful. There ought to be rules. And among those rules is, hey, if it's a beautiful building, leave it alone. You have no right to face it. So this is another look inside the underground passage. I really like the baboon or mandrill, whatever it is, at the end here. But again, there's something, this is where street art comes to life. But a world taken over just by the most simplistic, ugly, proud, boastful graffiti, you know, where people are just saying obscene things, drawing obscene things. That is a nightmare for the world. Now, I've already made one video on street art. And uh, after I made it, a friend of mine said, yeah, but what about the graffiti? And I realized, okay, I'm gonna have to. And I thought about the building, the aerial tramway building between the uh, Academy of Science and the Kino House. Someday I'll make another part two of the uh, street art, but can't always say pleasant things. So this is Burn in Tbilisi, Georgia, hoping you are weathering 2020 thoughtfully. And I'll just say goodbye in Georgian to you, Nakwamdis. Hope to see you soon here on Georgian Crossroads.